Okay, so I'd like to call uh, the Tuesday, March 23rd, 2021 uh, meeting of the Monroe County Plan Commission to order. And uh, could you please call the roll? Sure. Go ahead and do this while Larry's on. Uh, Margaret Clements. Here. D. Owens. Yes. Amy Thompson. Here. Julie Thomas. Jim Stainbrook. Present. Tron Enright Randolph. Jerry Pittsford. Jeff McKim. Here. D. Owens. I get to talk twice. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry, Dean. <laughs> sorry about that. I think so we think hard. we're going, where are we going? Second? <laughs> Right. I think you miss Bernie Garitas. Bernie Garitas, thank you. Yeah. I'm here, Jackie. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah, thank you. Uh, could you please introduce the evidence? Sure. Uh, the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance as adopted and amended, the Monroe County Comprehensive Plan as adopted and amended, the Monroe County Subdivision Control Ordinance as adopted and amended, the Monroe County Plan Commission Rules of Procedure as adopted and amended, and the cases that were legally advertised and scheduled for a hearing on tonight's agenda. Thank you. Is we approve the evidence as read. Second. Second. Okay, I'll call the roll. Thanks. D. Owens? Yes. Amy Thompson? Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes. Jim Stainbrook? Yes. Tron and Wright Randolph? Yes. Jerry Pittsford? Jeff McKim? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Motion passes. Is there a motion to approve the agenda for tonight? Move we approve the agenda. Second. Okay. Amy Thompson? Second. Julie Thomas? Yes. Jim Stainbrook? Yes. Tron N. Wright Randolph? Yes. Jerry Pittsford? Jeff McKim? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, uh, Jackie, would you be so kind as to uh, just review any major changes in the proposed? Uh, uh, meeting calendar for 2021? Absolutely. So this is an uh, item under administrative business. And um, so the items uh, that were changed on the 2021 meeting calendar include the filing deadline for the Historic Preservation Board, and that's to be able to um, follow our paper requirement notices. And then we have two administrative meeting changes because there is not an election this year that we wanted to push it to the normal first Tuesday of the month. So there's no confusion on that. If there is any discussion, we could entertain that now. Otherwise, a motion would be appropriate. I move we approve the 2021 meeting schedule as amended. Second. Second. All the rule. Julie Thomas? Yes. Jim Stainbrook? Yes. Tron and Wright Randolph? Yes. Jerry Pittsburgh? Jeff McKim? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Amy Thompson? Yes. Motion passes. And with that approval, I'd like to thank everyone for their service. I really appreciate everyone showing up to all these meetings and for helping them be as productive and efficient as possible. So let us move on to the next item of administrative business, and that is the appointments to the Ordinance Review Committee. Yes, so um, I will show this in um, also looking at the 2020 Ordinance Review Committee members. So we have Vacancies on the Ordinance Review Committee, all of these members are from the Plan Commission. So there's no citizen appointees to the Ordinance Review Committee. And then we have one citizen appointee for the Plan Review Committee that needs to be filled. So in total, we have five positions um, to be filled tonight. 
Madam President, if you mind me asking a question, didn't we have someone <clears throat> in mind for the citizen appointee? Maybe we could do that one first and uh, move to the ORC. Yeah, I, I would. I would move to appoint uh, Amy Swain. I, I'll second. I'll also like to make the comment that uh, I find it very. Uh, 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 I'm very appreciative that we took consideration to talk to our former citizen appointee. I spoke with him uh, afterwards and he was fine with moving uh, outside of that role. And I just thank uh, the, the commission here that we took the consideration to thank uh, the, our previous appointee prior to just reappointing someone new. Thank you, Mr. Enright Randall. So uh, there's a motion and a second to appoint Amy Swain uh, as a citizen appointee to the Plan Review Committee. Could you please call the roll? Aye. Jim Stainbrook? Yes. Tron Enright Randolph? Yes. Jerry Pittsburgh? Jeff McKim? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Amy Thompson? Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes. Thank you all. And so now we move over to the Ordinance Review Committee. And are there um, appointments? Are, are there any recommendations for appointees for this, these positions? I would still be willing to serve. And I think having uh, Mr. Garitas there is uh, very helpful with uh, his background and professionalism in the surveying field. That's Mr. Garitas, are you willing to continue? Yes. Okay. And um, are there, are, Julie Thomas, are you also serving on that? I, I would like to. Um, I don't know if Jerry is interested. I think we're might run into the same problem we had last time. Did he express an interest? He mentioned something, but I thought uh, you mentioned that Jim's was interested last time. I do know that I stepped away from the executive committee and uh, nominated Jerry to take over my role or suggested um, in hopes that I could retain my position on the ORC. Well, I think with the, I would just like to say that from my perspective and I, even though I know uh, Commissioner Thomas is extremely busy um, being, um, serving as the county commissioner it, during the next, um, during all the ordinance revisions that we're going to be undertaking, it would be awfully nice to have you continue to serve on the ordinance review committee. If you're willing. I, I, would, I would like to. <laughs> I'll shoot a motion out. You know, I'm guessing Jerry's not here. So um, I would like to appoint a, a slate to the ORC uh, Bernie Garitas, myself, Tron Enright Randolph, uh, Julie Thomas, and Jim Stainbrook. And then I guess, McKim, would you want to serve as an alternate still, or do you think we could put Jerry Pittsburgh in there? I am perfectly happy if Jerry would, you'd like to put Jerry as the alternate. Um, then I, I'd I'm like to. Happy to demure. Okay, perfect. Then I'd like to add him as the alternate, and let's see if what we get. Is there a second for that motion? Second. And uh, could we call the roll? Uh, Jerry Pittsburgh? Jeff McKim? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Amy Thompson? Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes. Jim Stainbrook? Yes. Tron and Wright Randolph? Yes. Great. Okay, so we're moving on to unfinished business. And the first item on the agenda is item number 2010-PUO-03. And this is the Joseph Green Outline Plan Amendment 2 for Clear Creek Urban. And this is the final hearing. So, uh, Drew, if you could please present to us the major changes and anything of note that we should consider before voting on this. All right, um, can you guys hear me okay? Okay, great. 
All right, so there have been some updates since the last time we've seen this um, at the last uh, Planning Commission regular session meeting, as well as the most recent admin meeting that was held er earlier this month. So I'm gonna go through a couple of those updates uh, for this petition, as well as give a little bit more of a, a brief background again, just so you're back up to speed with it. So overall, this uh, petition is located at 4831 South Rogers Street and 4833 South Rogers Street. It's the Joseph Green Plan Unit Development Outline Plan Amendment 2, otherwise known as Clear Creek Urban. Um, it's a request to uh, create a Plan Unit Development Outline Plan Amendment um, to amend the existing Joseph Green PUD into a new PUD called Clear Creek Urban. Uh, they're proposing a mixed development use uh, that would include attached attached townhomes, multifamily residences, and commercial space. And it's designed to provide additional housing options for working individuals and families from the county, as well as act as a neighborhood center for Clear Creek community. Um, the proposal includes multiple road connections and alternative transportation connections, and including a multi-use path, as well as a nature trail. Um, and they are planning to build this in three phases over three years. So here we have some updates uh, from the most recent um, changes and additions to this petition. Um, as of March 1st, on the left hand side of the pane here, um, you'll notice some changes to the uh, permitted uses, as well as some alterations to the design standards. Um, some parking standards were updated as well. Um, they also included requirements for removal of invasive species for the open space areas as well as committing to uh, the construction of two benches and one picnic table area um, for more usable uh, type open space in that uh, northern section that they have. Um, they've also updated their illustrative plans as well as updated some language to their outline plan. Now, as of March 18th, the most recent updates on the right-hand side of the uh, PowerPoint page here uh, they removed some language regarding staff level approval for the development plan submissions to make things more clear and correct with relation to the draft ordinance, as well as the outline plan and um, clearing up some space so that the development plan and outline plan match up well when we get to that stage. They also modified the gross density to specify a maximum number of units in each of the three areas in the outline plan instead of just uh, a gross density per acre. Um, they updated the parking space requirements and they also moved the nature trail requirements into the landscaping section for area A. Uh, they added a construction trailer as a permitted use and clarified that the existing buildings that are on the site could be used as an extraction trailer uh, up, up until completion of phase two of their design. They added some siding materials for area D, a pond planning recommendation, and as well as removed four new um, permitted uses. Um, that were recommended by planning staff to be removed. So we've seen a decrease in permitted uses uh, between each of these updates. Um, and we've also seen some um, updates as uh, in reference to removing all of the conditions from the existing Joseph Green PUD. Um, so since this is technically an amendment, um, sometimes uh, a PUD amendment will keep some of the old standards or old permitted uses of an existing PUD, but the petitioner in this case is electing to strike out all of the Joseph Green PUD and then just start from scratch with their own um, outline plan uh, and um, development plan, et cetera. So those are the primary updates. Um, to give a, uh, a little bit of a background again, reminder, here are the sections of the PUD, um, the proposed PUD, excuse me, um, that are before us tonight. The red is the existing Joseph Green PUD that is being amended and expanded. Um, so currently that red section has a PUD that has specific uses that are allowed, which are mostly industrial uh, in nature. So they are transitioning away from that type of industrial use in this area to a more neighborhood friendly center as well as residential by incorporating the yellow areas that are transferred from the Southern Meadows petition, uh, and then as well as uh, the green section, which was added by way of quiet title action from an abandoned railroad corridor. So this is the entire section of the PU, proposed PUD um, that is being 
um, heard tonight. Um, just a reiteration here, we've heard this before. Um, previously, uh, the petitioners were in enforcement action with the building department based upon those existing structures that are on the property right now. Um, they removed the middle section and kept uh, the, the split uh, remainder structures. Um, however, based upon this letter received from the building department that was issued in January of this year, um, the building department no longer finds them in um, enforcement. They find them compliant with the building department stuff. So um, that's just a little bit of re re reiteration here, excuse me, uh, for this petition and that they're not in enforcement with the building department. Um, here we have a location map, just as a refresher. South Rogers Street, as well as West That Road, it comes in um, from the west and intersects here about right in the middle of the red uh, polygon for the petition site. Um, here we have the updated permitted uses. Um, a lot of these figures you're about to see are already included in the packet, so I hope that you reviewed them. Uh, all of the changes were listed in red. Um, and then in the green text as well were um, just updates that were from previous meetings. So here in red, we see strikeouts of some of the most recent permitted uses that were removed um, from those March updates, March 1st and March 18th. Um, so uh, you can review those. Um, here I created a parking uh, table to kind of get a better idea of the ongoing conversation about parking here. Um, the text box in the top left corner gives a breakdown of the parking spaces and garages that the petitioner is proposing. Um, these numbers come from the petitioner and are verified from uh, uh, looking at their illustrative plan and their outline plan to confirm that these are the correct number of parking spaces that are they are proposing. Um, and then this text box here to the top right of the table is uh, pulled from the outline plan as well. This is the proposed minimum off-street parking requirements that PUD is proposing. Um, so these have seen some updates through uh, the iterations of this uh, report. Um, they are now suggesting to have uh, multifamily dwelling um, spaces uh, as in one bedroom multifamily dwelling has one space per unit, which is in line with the current zoning ordinance as well as the two bedroom at 1.6 spaces per unit. And then they're suggesting having commercial spaces as four spaces per 1,000 gross floor area. So I did the breakdown in this table here. Um, so essentially, um, a lot of these numbers here are based upon uh, the assumption that all of the residential units will be two bedrooms. Um, we were not given a final number of how many units will be two bedroom and how many units would be one bedroom. So I just went with the maximum. Um, so um, area B, C, and D each have different residential units that will be um, proposed. Um, area B being the large commercial building that will have commercial on the bottom floor, and then uh, stories above that will be residential space. Um, also, the commercial space on the uh, main floor is uh, proposed to be convertible to residential space if need be. The commercial does not work out. Area C is the paired townhomes. Um, those are 15 residential units. And then area D is that um, um, half commercial, half residential building uh, with one commercial space on the ground floor and then one residential unit on the, um, above them. So for residential units, it's up to 36. Um, they're proposing um, currently 32, um, and that's maintaining that the um, uh, commercial space in area B uh, becomes actually commercial space. So also um, we have the commercial uses in the next white column. Um, They're proposing up to five for area B, that larger building with the commercial all on the main floor. No commercial uses in area C with those paired townhomes. And then one commercial use in that last building um, on the south end that will have the commercial on downstairs and residential on the uh, second floor. Um, Jackie, would you go back to that page for me one second? Um, so overall, um, um, there seems to be a, a shortage of parking based upon um, just the calculation straightforward, um, but the petitioner is proposing to incorporate shared parking for the entire PUD 
um, where they can um, use residential and residential visitors and commercial uses are all um, incorporated and can be used concurrently. Um, infrastructure and access, um, nothing has changed in this section really. Um, stormwater management, um, a lot of that will come up along during the development plan section. Um, there is a preliminary drainage plan available as an exhibit in this packet um, and in this uh, presentation we'll get to. Um, planning staff is uh, encouraging that the uh, stormwater and bioretention areas are constructed in one of the first phases, the first phase, um, so that, that all that is situated and prepared um, appropriately. Um, other utilities are all on site for this um, uh, development, uh, the sanitary sewer, um, uh, street lighting, there's no proposed street lighting, public utilities are all present on the site, and there's a water supply system present on the site as well. Okay, so here we have some updates to the illustrative plan. Um, so building one is area B. Um, and that is the large commercial structure with residential on the upper floors. Um, area A is this area that has the nature path, and that is all in floodplain. Um, they were also proposing the incorporation of park benches and a picnic table uh, to make it a little bit more usable um, space. Um, buildings two, three, and four are area C. Those are all the paired townhomes. No commercial uh, uses are proposed there. And then building five, and then onward to the left or south is uh, area um, D. Um, so that's one commercial space with one residence on top and then uh, associated parking that is um, also proposed to be utilized for the post office across the street that is off site. Um, so here we just have a few more slides of the uh, zoom ins for each of the sections. Again, this is this would be area A. This would be area B. Area C with each of the paired townhomes. And then area D um, and um, area E as well. Um, area E is this section that uh, is being um, uh, circled right now. Um, that is the detention, bioretention area uh, for the site. Um, and then the parking space is to the right. And then that building five are the remainder built of area D. Here we have the preliminary drainage plan. Um, it's been reviewed by the MS4 coordinator. At this stage, they do not have any comments and they like the direction that it is going. Um, so there is uh, underground detention near area or building one, which would be area B. And then we also have the bioretention at the end of the PUD, which is area E um, as well. Uh, again, a lot of these details will be um, situated um, during the development plan stage. Um, here I included some of the um, height comparisons that we've talked about through the meetings. Um, to get a feel for how tall this structure, um, these structures will be in the area. Um, so there are, of course, there are multiple images here that are each um, showing different heights um, that are located in the area. Um, so each one has a corresponding number. Um, and then they also have the Clear Creek urban site um, highlighted in yellow on that top left photograph as well. So just some reference values here for the height of the um, proposed structures um, on the next slide as well. I believe the comparisons continue because I know that this was a, a conversation that we've had uh, many times regarding height and how the uh, building will fit in the character of the area. Again, we can come back to any of these images if we want to look at them at longer um, times or have any questions about them. Um, we have received some letters of support. Um, in the first plan commission meeting, we had a number of um, petitioners come on to the call, uh, the Zoom meeting and voice their support um, for the petition. 
um, or their uh, support slash opposition. There are, some of them were indifferent and just making sure that uh, planning staff and uh, the planning commission were doing their due diligence to make sure all the details get hammered out. Um, so uh, from the previous meeting, um, there were a number of those, um, but only a few submitted actual letters. So I will go through those here. Um, we have um, some letters of support uh, from a few uh, members of the public, as well as a couple of letters of remonstrance from the public. Um, so all of these were, not all of these, uh, uh, were included in the packet, unfortunately, because we received some of them after the publishing of the packet. Um, but I will say that this one specifically, if you go back real quick, Jackie, um, it doesn't say in the PowerPoint, but it does in the packet that um, this one is specifically calling out um, uh, the Clear Creek urban development, but then it talks about um, a little bit about the Southern Meadows petition, um, but we clarified with this specific um, community member that they intend to have their comments meant for all of the petitions going on in this area at the time. Um, and that email exchange is included in the packet um, if you'd want to see that. But um, continuing on, um, just a few other letters of remonstrance, just concern for um, how it will fit in the community. Um, and then the letters of support were excited about how it would it fit in the community and the amenities that it would bring um, to the community. So um, we got both sides here. Um, overall, um, planning staff recommends denial of this petition based on the findings of fact and subject to the Monroe County Highway Department and drainage engineer reports, specifically finding B, which states uh, the extent to which the proposal departs from the zoning and subdivision regulations, such as density, dimension, bulk, use, required improvements, and construction and design standards. Uh, uh, planning staff felt that um, there is still too much going on in the petition site. Um, related to this binding section um, to uh, provide a recommendation uh, of support. Um, I will now take any questions anyone has about the report and the changes that we've seen thus far. Drew, I would appreciate if you could uh, give us kind of an overview of the area and what's been approved lately, because there's a lot of density that's being approved and proposed for around that area. And it is, um, it is a sinkhole conservancy area there, you know, it's kind of fragile land. And um, I just wonder if you could just sh give us kind of a overview or account of what exists and what is being proposed? Sure, so um, this image here on your screen um, kind of gives an idea of some of the open PUD uh, proposals right now in the area. Um, this one is the Clear Creek Urban proposal, which is going on here where the cursor is showing. Um, immediately adjacent to the east is the Southern Meadows petition. Um, and that is stemming from an existing uh, approved uh, major subdivision plat that was originally intended for 95 lots um, and is now being proposed to double the density, essentially. Um, they're not doubling um, the uh, amount of structures, but uh, each structure will essentially be a townhome. So a lot of density growth uh, there in this area. Um, and then to the west, uh, we have the uh, proposed uh, trails, formerly known as White Oak PUD, um, that I'm not completely privy to the number of lots that they are proposing there, um, but I do know that it's a, it's a sizable number. Um, and Around then, 145, uh, just to... Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Um, so um, some density going on over there as well. And then we have seen some discussion in the past about other subdivisions to the um, southeast of Southern Meadows and the Clear Creek Urban Project, um, but those are still very much preliminary. Um, I don't, do not believe that we are, uh, received any new filings for those um, petitions. Okay, um, I think Commissioner Thomas has a question. I do, thank you so much. Um, I um, just wanted to, 
verify that um, building four is two stories proposed. It's on their on their outline um, on page 53, it doesn't say, but looking at the square footage, that would be my guess. Um, just based on the square footage, I just wanted to verify that. And um, uh, it's interesting to see that that the, um, this is really just a comment, it's just interesting to see the comparisons in terms of height um, are all downtown Bloomington, um, which this isn't downtown. And that's, I think, interesting. I think my question for staff, though, is besides verifying building four is two stories, because I think it is, um, it just says stories, um, that um, what it would take um, for a recommendation of approval on, on this particular uh, proposal? What would, what would that look like? I'm just curious. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I believe building four is intended to be two stories, much like building three. Um, I think if we scroll down to the next few images that show closer to building three or four, um, you're correct. It does just say stories, but I have not, uh, have not heard of any um, changes where building four is a, a lower height to building three based on the models that have been presented and other uh, details that have been presented throughout the process. So um, I'm sure that the petitioner could speak more accurately, but I believe it's supposed to be two stories. Um, generally speaking, um, to get to a positive recommendation, um, I may suggest um, Larry or Jackie speak more on it, but essentially planning staff believes that it, for the amount of acreage and con physical constraints for the site, um, there are we're asking for too much um, um, given um, how small the area is and how dense they're trying to go with the building coverage and um, uh, density and residences, et cetera, so. Thank you, Drew. Uh, Mr. McKim? Uh, yes, um, could you just uh, talk for a minute about what the um, comprehensive plan and Makua uh, plan say for this area? Sure, so the comprehensive plan has this area designated uh, let me pull it up here one second, specifically designated as, there we go, it's specifically designated as mixed residential and open space. The green is the open space and the orange is the mixed residential. Um, and mixed residential um, essentially uh, states that um, it accommodates a wide array of both single family and attached housing types integrated into a cohesive neighborhood uh, they may also include neighborhood commercial uses as a local amenity. Um, and in this section in the packet, I go through um, highlighting in green uh, um, points of the petition that are in line with mixed residential and then in gray points that are not quite in line. Um, so um, through the time, uh, there's been more green than gray through these iterations, um, but there still remain a few um, things that uh, the mixed residential doesn't quite match up with, with this petition. Um, and if you want to talk about any of those specifically, we can. Um, you know, some of them are, are, are pretty standard, like um, modest side setbacks. Uh, the petition site is um, uh, proposing different types of setbacks, uh, front side and rear, that are not normally um, included in the zoning ordinance or are in line with the um, comprehensive plan. Um, but yeah, if we want to go more through that section, we can, um, but I, I think I answered your question. I don't know. Let me know if you want more. Yes. I mean, I mean, I have, I have read, you know, I have read the specific points and I just wanted to kind of get it out there that mixed residential is really, is, is the broad category for what, uh, uh for, for what land use the, the, uh, urbanizing area plan and comprehensive plan have designated as appropriate for this area. Sure. Thanks. Mr. Stainbrook. Uh, thank you, Margaret. Uh, before we get into uh, uh, further uh, details, 
uh, Drew, uh, I'd just like to uh, say that um, I have always uh, favored uh, some development here as a focal point uh, for the community of, of Clear Creek. So that's very, very general, but uh, I wanted to say that before we did get into further detail. Thanks, Drew. Mr. Enright Randolph. Yes, so <clears throat> I guess uh, I wanted to kind of comment on uh, the what you brought to light uh, with more of what's going on uh, in the surrounding area. <clears throat> I know I've made a few comments in the past that, you know, we should maybe look at uh, the whole area um, as one kind of uh, a way of dealing with this and see what staff would recommend and what the plan commission would potentially be uh, deciding on. Um, we haven't done anything like that. Uh, so I understand your point that this is environmentally uh, a, a tricky area. Um, we have aquifers, we have karst features, we have, I'm even looking at a DNR well that's on their inventory, you know. Um, we have intermediate flows, we have classified flow lines, unclassified flow lines. I mean, it's tricky, but since we haven't looked at it more comprehensive of the surrounding area, you know, I just want to make this uh you know distinction that we sh shouldn't be looking at that each each we should be looking at each individual petition and um i absolutely understand your concern i even brought up the idea of a moratorium in this area until we maybe have more of a conclusive idea of how the county might want to develop it we didn't take that up to consideration we didn't take a lot of these up to consideration so i just wanted to point the fact out is we had opportunity to look at it real regionally or more not regionally but more within this area um so i hope i hope that we look at it uh as we have these other two petitions coming up next so uh um just wanted to kind of comment on that because uh i, I think it's needed to be said that uh, we should look at the individual petition and we had the opportunity to look more at everything that was going on. I do know it's a PUD and we do have the ability to to look at that um, well outline plan PUD it's a bit tricky. Um, <clears throat> my other uh, comment um, was kind of echoing uh, Com Commissioner Thomas says what do they need to do to get a favorable recommendation and I, I feel like planning has been very accommodating to trying to figure out a solution here. Um, I agree with uh, Jim Stainsburg, Stainbrook's uh, comment that I really think this is an ideal place for something uh, like this and uh, with Mr. McKim's comment that this does have uh, a mixed use to it. So. Um, as we enter in some of what I feel is going to be a very tough discussion, uh, we, we need to be respectful to that these are all each individual petitions and um, we need to move forward delicately. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Garitas? I've just got a couple, just one thing right now and then after we hear the petitioner's representative or the petitioner, maybe I'll expand. Uh, when he or she speaks, I'm just curious if the requirement of the stormwater and bioretention basins be constructed before anything else on the site would be a hindrance to the uh, construction process once, once they would get started, if it is approved. That's it for now. Mara, did you have a comment? Yeah, I, I'm just going to reiterate some of my uh, prior comments. And number one, this looks a lot like downtown Bloomington. It doesn't look like the rural area in which this uh, setting exists. So that's comment number one. Number two, um, 
I believe we've overindulged this idea of mixed use residential with the with our ideas for the other that there should be commercial space that is somehow magically successful on the first floor of buildings that we uh, design for them. Um, I would challenge anyone to make a business go in any one of those six commercial units that uh, we're proposing. And if we, as we drive around Bloomington, we can see uh, the idea has been really uh, indulged um, in terms of the idea. The realization of that idea is more problematic. So I'd like to, um, to uh, put that out there. And at that point, if there are any other questions from the uh, members of the plan commission, uh, we, we could take those now. Otherwise, we'll go to the petitioner or the petitioner's representative. Okay, great. Uh, if the petitioner is present or the petitioner's representative is present and would like to speak, um, Jackie, could you help me with this? Because we yeah. have- Margaret, just because we have a, a large meeting and a large agenda, I wanted to know, do you want to put any time limitations on any public speaking tonight or how would you like to proceed? Well, I'd like to ask my fellow members of the commission, uh, do, would you prefer to have a three minute comment period? If so, we'll vote on that. Uh, we should have a motion for I, that and then vote on that. I, I move a three minute comment period for public comment on uh, all of our partition, petitions tonight. I'll second. I'll second that, yeah, clarification that that doesn't include the petitioner. That's right. Right, okay. Correct. Okay, so could you please call the roll? Sure, Larry, would you like to call the roll? If you can hear me, I will. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, a little echoey, but yes. I've got a I'm sorry, I've got a problem with my... Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call the roll. Okay. Jeff McKim? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Jerry Pittsburgh? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Amy Thompson? Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes. Jim Stainbrook? Yes. Tron and Ray Randolph? Yes. Okay, passes. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move to the petitioner and the petitioner's representative. And if you could help me with that, I'd be grateful, Jackie. Yes. I am looking for Tambi, Michael, or Kendall. Hi, this is Tambi. Tambi, okay. Let me see. <clears throat> hey guys, how are you? Thank you so much for all of your efforts and helping us to make this a really good project for Clear Creek. Um, this has been a property that has been so ugly my entire life, and I really want to make a difference and create something that's cool that people can enjoy both living there, driving by there when they're on the trail. Um, and so that, as you know, that's been our goal all along. Um, I would like to make just a couple comments. Uh, my first comment is about uh, commercial space parking calculation. Um, your calculations are made on the total square footage footprint of the building one. Um, that would actually be less for the commercial space because the back half of that building is parking garage. So um, that, that changes the number slightly. Um, also, just to answer Julie's question, um, building four, yes, it is two stories. Um, it is commercial in the lower level and the upper level um, is to be an apartment and that is in the outline plan on page six at the top. Um, that would be, um, there's an image there uh, of, a, of a rendering that that would look like. And then I just want to kind of give you an FYI about the comparisons to downtown. We simply did those because we wanted to provide feedback to those on the planning commission um, because they mentioned a lot of the buildings downtown. So we just provided that as a comparison, but to let you know, for example, uh, the building that's just uh, on South Walnut Street um, uh, to the north of the Chocolate Moose, that new building there, um, we can fit five of our apartment building in that building. So that's kind of how we compare. We 
We're not nearly as um, big or tall. Um, we have cut off a story of that apartment building. We wanna provide residences for people uh, in the area, we have a lot of schools in our area. And, you know, when my kids were going to Clear Creek, I couldn't find an apartment for them um, when I was going through a divorce. And, and that was something that was really important to me to stay in that school district. So I think that provides on a small scale, um, it fills a niche in that area. And I think it would be greatly appreciated by some folks. Um, I know the 2012 comprehensive plan calls for 14 to 20 units per acre. Um, we're sitting at about 11, at just over 11 and a half. Um, we requested 14 originally, but planning staff recently asked us to specify that by area, so we did. We've, we've made almost 30 changes since January at either the request of staff or um, observations and comments from the plan commission members. So, and we appreciate that because we think that'll make a, a better project. Um, and again, just going over density, 2015 urban plan, 10 to 14 units per acre. So we're falling in those, um, you know, those numbers um, quite nicely, I think. So again, I just want to thank you all for your time. I do want to ask Michael if he would like to make a comment. Now, and I do want to comment um, to Bernie's uh, comment about the stormwater. Yes, that can be done in advance. Okay, so here's Michael. Thank you. Please be can be. Thank you. I think quickest response to Bernie's question was no, it doesn't cause us problems. Yes, it can be done. No, it doesn't cause us problems. And so I think we've got that situation worked out with planning. I've been trying to wrap my head around how to go forward with the large building. It is a large building. We've known that from the beginning. <clears throat> from the goal that the petitioner has brought forward to this to bring affordable, essentially apartment-like housing to this community, and that's woefully underserved in this area, it, it has to be. I've uh, talked with people and people uh, asked, well, are there gonna be elevators? Well, if you start looking at the possibility of even adding elevators, we don't have any planned at this point, they might make sense at some point, but there's gonna be a certain density that's required to even cover that. The best thing I can think of off the top of my head to keep in mind as you think what this might look like would be what has happened around the Coca-Cola building where the, um, the housing for uh, the, the abused women's shelter and things that have been built up around there, that's across from a very park-like open green area. It's a large building, large structure, but it doesn't seem packed like downtown Bloomington this large building on this structure will have a very large green space, uh, the, the floodplain that can be built in, and it's gonna be like, like a structure set in a park-like area. So I think that will have uh, a very strong mitigating effect to what you're gonna wind up with with the look of this, uh, this space. Um, that's the best way I can think to get my, my mind around it. Across the street, there are a lot of mixed uh, people living there and little businesses uh, scattered around. This is going to try to try to get some of those businesses together in one space to be, again, more of a fo focal point for this community. Um, so it's, it's definitely a change from 1930s one-story houses across the street, but that's not what the petitioner wants to build. If we did a Xerox copy cut and paste and built the same uh, structure across the street in this thing, it, it's not gonna be a focal point or a big boost to this community. I know that some of the other areas you've got uh, under discussion around here, you know, it's a, there's a metal lark field, protect the metal larks. Here, you don't have anything like that. Here, what you have is syringe needles and tires that are thrown. Uh, it's, a, it's a dumping site, and it needs this kind of vibrancy and life to get it turned around and be something that the petitioner, who's born and raised there, lives around there, and the entire community can again be proud of. So it's, I, I just can't think of a, a more effective way to try to say, it's not what is there right now. It's going to be a change. It is intended to be a change, and it's intended to be a very, uh, very positive change. And that's the, I think the drive by the, or think about the Coca-Cola uh, 
all those units that have been built out there and you don't get the feeling that you're in a canyon or uh, crowded around in downtown Bloomington, you have a very strong sense even there on, on the edge of uh, downtown that you have a nice, pleasant area to live and get your life changed around. I, I can't think of, if you've got other questions or anything else, I'll be glad to try to answer them. But um, the big building is something of a hurdle, but I just, we, we don't see that it should be a hurdle that should trip this up at this point. Thanks, Any? Michael. I see Julie Thomas has her hand raised, possibly a question. Sure. I do, thank you. I just want to, again, thank the petitioner for being so willing to work on this project. I, I think the idea is a really interesting one. I do, uh, I have a question, uh, one of which maybe the petitioner can't answer, and if not, then I wanna hold it over and put a pin in it for um, someone else to talk about. So the first question is, whether or not building one is viable at two stories instead of three. Because if you compare it to the showers building, the showers building's two, two stories tall. Uh, and then it would put it in line with the other buildings. The other question I had, um, and this one again may not be petitioner question, but if I remember correctly, I looked through my notes and I don't remember writing down, I didn't write down who said it and I don't remember who said it, but uh, there was some discussion about using the area, uh, the parking area to the south of building five as a post office overflow parking and somebody raised an issue with that because of pedestrian safety and there is a crosswalk there now. Um, is that still an issue? And again, that may be a staff question. Maybe Lisa Rich, I don't know. Thank you. Drew, do you know, I remember the discussion about a hawk light. Was that in the outline plan or is that something that was just discussed? I think that was just discussed. I'm not, I think that was more or less for the intersection of that road and South Rogers Street. Um, we do have the draft of the traffic study available um, that's been reviewed um, that talked about the applicability of a four-way stop here. Um, but I'm not sure how far the discussion went for that, um, that crosswalk area by the post office um, and how much we were um, requesting the petitioner to be in charge of that or, or something. I, I want to defer to the petitioner too. And Larry, did you have something you want to add really quickly? You're on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, uh, the one concern I guess I would raise in regard to particularly the post office parking um, is, and, and, and Petitioner can correct me if I'm wrong on this, is that these individual lots or areas are set up that they could be actually sub sold off. And so if you're saying you have shared parking, and uh, yet a lot could be sold off, I'm not quite sure that how that works. And that's right where if, if I guess the question I have, is there an intent to lease parking spaces to the post office? If so, then it's, you can't really double count those as overflow parking for the rest of the project. Uh, I guess overall my concern is that this may work okay if, it, if you have retained ownership so that everybody has access to the open space and that uh, there is shared parking and that there's shared management and so on and, and somebody that's doing maintenance. But once you start selling individual parcels off, then <clears throat> I'm not sure it works. I got, I got that's the one issue and maybe the petitioner can address that. Hi, this is Tambi. Um, would you like for me to speak to answer? I know I can answer uh, Julie's question um, regarding the stories in building number one. So we started out um, with building number one as um, a model of a building in French Lick, which actually had a fourth story on one end that was more of an architectural feature, but also had two units in it. So we reduced the building height um, already to remove that 
that story, um, the feasibility of building number one without an additional story. In other words, only making it two story high, two stories high is um, not realistic for us in this petition. Um, I will say that the requested height for building number one is 45 feet, which is the current height of the current PUD. Um, so our building will not uh, not exceed um, what's already defined in the current PUD. Um, then regarding uh, the parking for the post office, I mean, the post office has been there since 1870. Um, it appears that in about 1970, they paved their own parking lot across the street. Um, I recognize as a resident uh, and a person who utilizes the post office and drive by on South Rogers really frequently um, that it's something that needs to be improved. And this is one manner for uh, making that improvement. Um, so that would be, uh, that's my, you know, that is our suggestion for, for trying to make that happen is, and there, no, there is no intent of charging the post office for parking in that area. So hopefully that, that answers your questions on that. I did have a question regarding of intent to subdivide. Larry, I believe that Togni Drew had spoken with the petitioner today and Tammy can correct us if this is the incorrect interpretation, but their plan would be to do a development plan and construct before subdividing. Okay, well, if uh, the petitioner and the petitioner's representative are finished, uh, we can move to the public. So I'd like to uh, ask the members of the public who um, are here to support uh, this development to please raise your hand. And then we'll, Jackie will call on you um, one at a time and you have three minutes. Yes, and if you are calling in just by phone and you wanna call, you wanna raise your hand, you press star nine, or if you want to unmute, you press star six, but we will ask that you remain muted until the three minutes time period for the other person has ended and we call on you. Um, Brady, would you be able to have a timer set up for us? Yes, I can, but I don't have the uh, software to have it on my or to share it, so. That's okay. Uh, okay. If you yeah, could just do an audio, that'd be great. Yep. We'll do. Okay. Looks like Tracy has her hand raised. Yes. Okay. We can hear you, Tracy. Go ahead. Okay. I live uh, right in Eagle View, just uh, about a minute walk from this area, drive by there about every day and have watched this area develop and grow. And we need housing so badly. We need affordable and workforce housing so badly. This community is suffering greatly from it. We, uh, you can look at houses in Eagle View that have gone on the market. They sell before you get a sign in the yard. There's people scrambling and looking and actually fighting over them at this point. Um, people, people really need places to live that they can afford. And this is going to provide some great housing for that, some great workforce housing. Um, it'll be good for our community. We very much need it. The nice thing about it is that it's so close to 69 um, and it's got a couple pathways to get there. And it's so easy to get downtown. The location is superb for that. We have roadways in place to, to get where we need to go. And it's just a, a perfect location to see development grow. It sits right beside two schools. You've got one adjacent to it and one just to the north, about a minute north, drive through the Eagle View subdivision or up Roger Street. Um, there's churches, there's, there's schools, there's businesses all around. To say that this won't support businesses, I just think that any businesses that go in there are going to prosper and do well. I mean, there's so much traffic through here now that 
people are going to want coffee shops. They're going to want places to do business, to run in, you know, dry cleaners, that sort of thing. The local neighborhood businesses that are so much in demand, I think will thrive in that area. Um, I also think that, um, that if you look down the street on Rogers, you'll see like the, the gym is always packed, always go down through there and the parking lot's full all the time. So there's just a lot of people that live in this area that have been looking forward to something happening here. The only thing I could see that might be thought about is the intersection at that road in Rogers Street could use a little bit of improvement when this happens. It probably should have happened when Eagle View was done. They tried, they made it better, but it, it gets a little bit iffy when you're coming south on Eagle View Drive to the four-way stop. So with increased traffic, it's gonna get a little more iffy. And, uh, and I think that could be cleaned up a little bit for better visibility. But other than that, Look at the trails and look at everything that's happening down here. We need this. We need this so badly. And Monroe County has nowhere else to build. We have nowhere else to buy lots. It's all been stopped. And so and, until we can get more lots, we will have no more housing and housing will no longer be affordable in any way, shape or form, which is pretty much not now. And it's just getting worse by the day. So I hope that you guys will think about that. Um, and consider that it's it's for the best of our community that we have places for people to live and they're close to schools in, in so many ways in this area. You couldn't get a better location when it comes to convenience. So that's that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. Would uh, Erica Morris is next? Hi, this is Erica Morris. Um, you know, I'm a resident near this, and I think it's very important as we're looking at developing, you know, this part of the county really adjacent to the city of Bloomington is we keep in perspective. The reality is sooner or later, I think all of us have to recognize these open farm fields are going to be built on. And, and my concern is this looks like a great project. It fits with the style, it adds to the surroundings, it doesn't detract. And my fear is if we were to turn something down like this, what, it, what would be put there in place? So are we risking a situation where if this is turned down, we get something that detracts from our neighborhood? And I think that's something that has to be looked at in balance. Um, because right now, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be an improvement. You know, as far as the post office, it's great to use, you know, whether a signal or not is put in there for a crosswalk. Um, it's currently like playing a game of Frogger anyways. So anything that was done even to give more parking is only going to be an improvement to the area. But again, I think as we're looking at all these projects that are coming up in the area, the most important thing to recognize is it will be built at some point, but can we make it the most appropriate to maintain the integrity of our neighborhoods? Thank you. Um, and then Jennifer Pearl put something in the chat, which I'll relate to everyone. Does anyone else have a comment and support? And I don't think she'll be speaking this evening. So I'm gonna be. Jennifer Pearl, did you wanna read your statement? Sure, thank you so much. Um, my name is Jen Pearl and I'm the president of the Bloomington Economic Development Corporation. We're dedicated to the retention, development and attraction of quality jobs across Monroe County. Um, my statement is uh, sort of echoing something that was said earlier, uh, just about the need for housing in our community at large. Um, when new or existing companies are looking to invest in Monroe County, um, they often review quality of life factors that impact their employees. Um, that includes adequate workforce housing options for their current and future employees. And uh, they often describe adequate housing as uh, factors that include housing quality, cost, and quantity. Uh, we've been hearing the same thing from our current employers as well, that this has been um, challenging for um, our existing workforce here. Um, it's been a concern for BEDC members and employers across the county, and uh, there's been documentation of um, housing shortages across the region. Um, and in terms of uh, this project, uh, this is something that uh, could potentially add to overall cost. I cannot speak to the technical aspects of the proposal, but we just wanted to um, thank the plan commission 
for considering ways to expand housing options uh, for residents across the community uh, to enhance quality of life and um, our capacity for uh, supporting folks living across the county. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. And then Margaret, you had your hand raised. I will, I don't see anyone else in the queue to speak in support. Yeah, well, as pre president of the plan commission, I'd just like to caution us to, uh, to be careful about our assertions that we should be data driven as far as our uh, stated needs for uh, more housing. Uh, in the ROI study that Jennifer Pearl uh, just uh, referenced, I think she indicated that an additional 5,100 to 5,200 uh, additional housing unit, units would be needed by the year 2030. And according to my calculations, um, in the county alone, we've more than half met that within just a few short years since the the report's publication. If we add in what has been uh, built in the city, which is more than 4,000 units, I think that we need to uh, not just make an emotional appeal to more housing and that there and assert that there's a housing need, but we actually have to do a very critical assessment of the housing stock that we have, the housing stock that we've approved, the housing stock that we're developing, and the housing stock that uh, is about to be built. And I think that we run the risk of building too much housing, and, uh, and that can also present other problems. So I would like us to be data-driven, and I, I um, would like my, I would uh, please beg for more respect in terms of, uh, of data rather than um, just assertions. So thank you. And turning now to the uh, to those members of the community who are opposed to this project, I would like to open the floor to comments from uh, opposite in opposition of this project. And the time limit again is three minutes. Madam President, before we move forward, uh, if you would, I would just like to. I express in the chat, there's a uh, good discussion, but there's some things that uh, I feel would be more of a public comment. I mean, I wanna uh, state that if it's just in the chat, it's not going on the public record. So uh, please uh, take the opportunity to speak uh, so you can be on record. Um, thank you. Yes, yes. And so at the end of the uh, comments in opposition to this, if Jackie, you could read the comments in the chat, I'd be most grateful. And so now if uh, the members of the public who are wishing to speak in opposition of this project could raise their hand, there's a three minute limit. Thank you. I will recognize uh, Mr. Ron Mellett. Hi, this is Ron. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, one of the questions I have, uh, I guess there's two. I guess there's been enough research to know that the existing job market is going to create a need for this kind of housing, kind of going to what Margaret was saying, or that the projected growth of businesses in this area are going to require that kind of housing. And the other is having, I live down here too, um, on uh, and I, the roads are just not built for heavy construction. I see semis on them from time to time, but they they look way out of place. The roads are very narrow, no shoulders. Um, and they're not, even at that intersection of that road in South Rogers, a few months ago, there were some really big divots that, it, that were created in the road that had to be filled. And that was not from heavy duty construction equipment and materials coming in to build a, a Structure, construction uh, grouping like you're talking about. So what happens to the roads before the construction starts and after it's over to make sure that these roads are passable and put back into even better shape than they are right now? Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next, is there another person who would uh, like to address the plan commission in opposition of this uh, project? I have not seen anyone. Um, I don't know, if, Paul, briefly, if you wanted to discuss about the offsite improvements that will be required for this project and the other project. 
Uh, sure, the uh, Roger Street is going to be improved by the Southern Meadows um, development, as well as the approach uh, that road uh, intersection. It'll be a left turn lane each direction on Roger Street. And then the uh, extension of that road will have be four lanes wide to accommodate left turns both directions as well as through and right turning traffic. Um, Southern Meadows is still working on the traffic study to uh, see when a, an, an all-way stop will be needed and it looks like it will be needed sometime during all of these developments coming together. So we're just trying to pin down the timing so we'll be ready to uh, have that implemented uh, before the warrants are met. Thank you, Mr. Satterley. Um, well, if there could you, Jackie, please read any messages from the chat that yes. are present. Thank you. Um, so Lisa Ridge asked if anyone had talked to Paul Satterley, our highway engineer on the Hawk pros and cons on the Hawk signals. TMB Cassidy said, we're suggesting the signal that you can press the button and it flashes in both directions. I may not have proper terminology. And then Lisa mentioned, we have Hawk signals at other locations, very costly for ongoing maintenance. Just want to make sure that our department is included on the type of signals you're looking to install. It usually becomes a maintenance item for our department. Tambi mentioned, yes, Paul is familiar with conversations with the Smith Design Group, their consultant. And um, one of the consultants from Smith Design Group, Katie Stein said, Lisa, Paul had mentioned he did not like the Hawk signal, but recommended rapid flashing beacon signal, something to further discuss with Paul if needed. Um, and then that is the main gist of it. Um, and then Ron Mellett had spoken and then added some other comments. The question thought I am asking on the road is weight of the vehicles using the roads versus what they are rated for. And again, in reference to all heavy equipment and material supplies to be brought to the construction site. Um, and then we have one more person that's wishing to raise their hand and that is Guy Lofman. Jackie, did you want me to comment a little bit on Ron's statement for the, the public roads? So the road, the only roads that we have posted in the county is basically the ones that have a bridge weight limit on the roads. Um, the rest of them are basically public roads. Um, I, I realize that some of them have heavier traffic um, than other roads. We can take pictures of the roads and the conditions of the roads before development um, starts. And then, um, but again, if you get an area like this and you have, it's, say for instance, these three developments are um, approved you're going to have construction traffic going to all of these developments. You're going to have developers stating that it's not their development that's causing the road damage. Um, so it's kind of hard to uh, pinpoint that down. It usually, um, it's a public road. So we usually end up having to fix the um, repairs to the public road. Um, if there was a means to hold um, the heavy equipment construction traffic a little bit more accountable, um, it would be great, but usually we bond, um, but that's just basically for their project limits. It's not outside the project limits of getting to, to that project area. So um, again, the only time we have a weight limit is uh, basically freeze and thaw, which is just a short period, but mainly just on the roads that have a bridge weight limit. So I hope that helps. Thank you, Lisa. And then Mr. Um... Lofton, if someone could unmute him. Yes. Yeah, I think I may be. I want to speak on the uh, White Oak trails. I was just trying to oh. learn how to get unmuted, but it okay. looks like you can save me from my fate. Yep, we will, we will acknowledge you when that petition comes up. Thank you. And just to confirm, Mr. Lofton, you do not want to speak on this Clear Creek Urban? No. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, the uh, public comment is uh, now closed and uh, we will revert back to the members of the plan commission for further discussion and then a motion. Jeff, did you have your hand raised? Yes. Um, I just wanted to make my comment. Uh, 
this area clearly had more of a village-like past and can have a village-like future. I was really glad that Mr. Stainbrook referred to the community of Clear Creek. This project is very much in support of the comprehensive plan. The gray areas identified in the staff report all seemed much more narrow and technical, while the petition directly addresses the philosophical underpinnings of the mixed residential zone. These parcels are challenging to work with, but the petitioner has come to us with a plan to activate what is now a pretty scrubby, not very attractive strip of land that's sometimes used as an illegal dump and turn it into an attractive village center that honors our community's past. Importantly, this project also creates some new workforce housing options for residents. And with the multi-use trail that connects with our existing network, supports the vision of a walkable neighborhood with nearby schools. And I think the petition has done a great job of scaling the project back to meet legitimate concerns of plan commission members and staff to the degree that it's economically feasible. I think this petition deserves our support and it certainly has mine. Thank you. Are there any other members of the commission who would like to speak? Mr. Garitas? Yeah, I'm gonna be brief because because Jeff really said about everything I kind of wanted to point out. I think the a couple things I would add, I think the trail does make this a kind of a unique uh, focal point, and I think this will be a destination. Uh, I think the developers understand construction, they understand development, and I think they understand the market. I think that there's a lot of potential for the commercial or the retail and the, the mixed use. It's, that's consistent with the comp plan uh, with all the residential, the churches, the schools and everything that's in this area to, to make this a success. I really do. I think it's, it's also an anchor when we see the uh, very nice homes, that the, the people in the neighborhoods have kept them up very nicely. But as time goes by, I think that this is going to assist in people upgrading, investing and spending money on the existing improvements the existing dwellings that are there so i mean i really echo everything that jeff said uh and i'm i'm going to be excited to support it i'm excited about the project i think it's a i just think it's a neat exciting project that people will enjoy once it's built thanks thank you mr garitas mr stainbrook well margaret thank you but i i think at this point anything i might offer further would be a redundancy so thank you Thank you, Mr. Enright Randolph. I could almost say what Jim just said, but <clears throat> I do want to point out one thing. Uh, I think Jeff said it very eloquently, and uh, I, I absolutely agree with everything he just said. Um, the fact that we are talking about the height of the building and that they could actually build something higher than what's being proposed with its current restrictions or under its current ordinance, I think should be notable. Um, also, I understand um, that they used a lot of images from the city to uh, to reflect the height, but I mean, thank you. It gives, I, I know what those buildings are. If they chose a building out, you know, somewhere I've never drove by, you know, how could I really use that in context of what maybe it would look like here. So I, I agree that we're not the city, but I, I do appreciate them finding buildings for us to actually have some type of idea of what the height would be there. So uh, I just wanted to make those two points and I'm absolutely in support of this petition. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Enright Randolph. Uh, Commissioner Thomas. Yes, um, I have I have comments, but I think I still have more questions. I'm sorry to say, and and um, I think I've heard two things tonight. Uh, one, I heard from Drew. I think that there is a traffic study, but then I heard from Paul that there isn't one yet. Do we have a traffic study, and and what is it telling us? <laughs> We, we do have a traffic study. It's a draft traffic study. Uh, there's a link to it in the uh, uh, published packet. Um, and essentially it speaks upon um, how there will likely be a need for a four way, a full four way stop at that intersection of West Stat Road and South Rogers Street. Um, Paul did respond to the consultant that had uh, uh, submitted that draft uh, with additional comments to finalize the report. 
but we have not yet seen that final version of the report uh, with Paul's comments included. I am so sorry I missed that. I swear I looked at that packet closely, but not closely enough apparently. So thank you for that. And um, I apologize. I'm gonna look at it real quick. Um, the other thing is, I think one of the questions that was raised is a really good one by a um, member of the public about the roadways. And I think it, I think it extends beyond this, this intersection because getting up to an intersection is one thing and the intersection is one thing, but the question um, uh, um, I would have for Ms. Ridge or Mr. Satterley is whether or not there's a planned um, further development of Rogers Street at this point. And I, my guess is that the answer is no because of where everything's located and um, right of way. But if you could answer that directly, that would be helpful for me. We don't have any current projects that would be widening the road or anything. I know we did a, uh, one of our very first community crossing projects was the paving of all of Roger Street. Um, and that was basically the last project that we had um, for that area. Right. I, I have been sitting here trying to ponder different ways because um, I do understand the, the construction traffic and what it does to a roadway. But I have to sit there and I think back at, you know, the um, the limestone quarries and where they're at and they're not responsible for taking care of our roads there and that's on a daily basis. Um, and then you have to consider that some of these developments, if they're approved in that area, they're going to have different timelines and they're, they could be, some could be built in a year and some could take five years or 10 years to build out. So it's really hard to strict it that way too, to have some responsibility um, of having the, the roads repaired. But as of now, there's no projects to widen Rogers Street. Okay, excellent, thank you so much. Um, the other thing is I don't think that the issue of overflow parking for the post office was resolved. And I feel like uh, Mr. Wilson raised a really good point about if you sell the buildings off versus leasing them out, then how do you accommodate and allow for that parking to occur? Uh, but overall, I am appreciative of the fact that our planning staff has made a recommendation. Um, and, I, and I think we would be um, foolish to ignore um, planning staff's concerns at this point. That's why we have them. They are the professionals. And uh, I appreciate every, everything everybody's done on this petition. I know there's been a lot of movement and that is awesome to see. Um, and and um, it would be good to come up with something where planning staff felt a bit more comfortable. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further discussion among the members of the commission, uh, if there's a motion, uh, I would appreciate hearing it at this Mr. time. Mr. McKinn's hand is up. Oh, sorry. And I was oh. going to want to have an additional question too. Oh, Mr. McKinn. Uh, I, was, I was going to make a motion, so I'll, I'll defer to Mr. Enright Randolph. I guess my question is to planning staff. With some of uh, this information um, being communicated today, uh, as far as the process goes, this is the final hearing. Um, if if there was a need to have more consideration, which <laughs> if you look how many times we've discussed this, uh, what would that process be? Or are we even allowed to continue this potentially? Because I really want to see this happen. And if we move this forward from the plan commission, great, but uh, it, it doesn't fall in our lap for a final decision. So. I would be very curious how that process may work if we may need to continue this. John, you can continue. You have to make a motion since this is the final hearing to continue it to the next regular session to have another hearing, but you are not limited to that. Okay, thank you. Mr. McKim. Um, I, I wanted to see if anybody else had any comments on Mr. Enright Randolph's uh, comment. I have a more general comment, and I would just say I'm, I'm very reluctant to vote against planning staff recommendations, but I do think this development fits the comprehensive plan that the petitioner has made multiple, multiple uh, adjustments to try and meet 
um, uh, concerns of the community and concerns of uh, planning staff and planning commissioners. And although I um, do certainly still have reservations as I do with wondering how any development is going to build out, I, I do support this effort as well. I do think it'll be uh, a nice addition to the community um, as things develop in, in Clear Creek. Mr. Wilson? I just wanted to respond a little bit uh, quickly. Our job is to raise technical issues. Our job is to assure the projects meet the standards of the zoning ordinance. Uh, in regard to the concept, in regard to the, the, the idea, I don't think we have any problem with that. But again, our job is to say, hey, we have concerns in regard to meeting these technical requirements. And, and that's, not a, that's not to say we're opposed to the, to the mixed use or to the style of the project. It's just that our job, again, is to review the technical requirements and make a recommendation. I just want to get that on the record. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Okay. Hi, this is Tambi, the petitioner. Would it be possible for me to make an additional comment? I think Tambi, we have, a, they're it's, about to make a vote. So I, I would entertain that to Margaret if you want to, we're on the plan commission comments at this point. It's in regards to post office parking. Uh, well, I, I hate to um, preclude conversation. So, Tambi, if you would please uh, make your comment before we entertain a motion, I'd be very grateful. Okay. Um, I would also like to, to speak this one additional comment regarding parking for the post office, um, because I think that that post office has been an anchor for the community and should continue to be a healthy anchor. Um, I, my company that is making this petition, Blind Squirrels, owns the parcel that is vacant next door to the post office. I would be willing to make a commitment to develop that lot into parking within the next five year period for the post office as a condition of this petition being approved. And um, that's all that I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Tambi. You, you've been wonderful to work with. And I echo Mr. Wilson's uh, uh, comments that the idea is wonderful, but it's, you know, they're, so I just wanna thank you for all of your perseverance. But it, that being said, it's time for a motion. <laughs> so if one of my colleagues on the plan commission would make it, I'd be grateful. Um, commission in the matter of petition 2010-PUO-03, Joseph Green, Clear Creek Urban Plan Unit Development Outline Plan Amendment 2. I move we forward to the Board of Commissioners a positive recommendation. Second. Mr. Wilson or Jackie, would you please call the roll? I call the roll. The uh, motion is to send a favorable recommendation regarding to uh, petition 2010-PUO-03 the Joseph Green Outline Plan Amendment 2 to the Clear Creek Urban uh, PUD. Uh, this is on final hearing. A vote uh, in favor, a, vote, a yes vote is a vote to send the uh, uh, Outline Plan Amendment to the uh, uh, commissioners with a favorable recommendation. Uh, I'll now call the roll. Mark Clements. No, I'm sorry, no. Uh, Tronny Ray Randolph? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Jeff McKim? Yes. E. Owens? No. Jerry Pittsford? Yes. Jim Steinbrook? Yes. Julie Thomas? No. Uh, Amy Thompson? Yes. Okay, uh, the vote is approved by a six to three vote to send a favorable recommendation onto the plan commission.
Thank you. Thank you everyone for uh, really vetting this project, for discussing it rigorously, and for uh, the petitioner for all of your perseverance and your concessions. So thank you so much. Uh, we're moving on now to the next item on the agenda, which is item number 2012-PUO-05, and that's Fieldstone Planned Unit Outline Amendment 3, Parcel L. And this is a preliminary hearing, and they're requesting the waiver of the second hearing. So um, I think it is Anne, if you would be so kind as to present this, I'd be grateful. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much. OK. So you're all familiar with this petition. It's uh, the Fieldstone Plan Unit Development, uh, Plan Unit Outline Amendment 3, specifically for Parcel L. So this is the preliminary hearing. We jumped a little bit with a skipped meeting, but this is the preliminary hearing. They do have a, a waiver of the second hearing requested. So the initial request for this petition is to add three additional uses to parcel L, which is the, the Fieldstone PUD. It's located in Van Buren Township, section two. So parcel L is just one section of the Fieldstone PUD. It's 4.49 acres. It's currently undeveloped and vacant. So the petitioners are requesting to add the government facility community center and agricultural uses under chapter 802 to the approved outline plan. So the parcel as you know is currently Fieldstone PUD. Um, on the right side, we have the original planning and development plan. Um, parcel L was a sp uh, specifically for like neighborhood commercial development area. Uh, it was called a limited neighborhood business park. Sorry, one second. Sorry, one second. I'm getting out of this is a little jumped around no, no, no. for a second. There we go. Okay. Um, so the Fieldstone PUD regarding the comprehensive plan for Makua phase one, it was designated as suburban residential, but for Makua's phase two, it was designated as a gateway west. Um, these uses would be fairly consistent with the Fieldstone PUD for phase two, for phase one, not necessarily suburban residential is fairly um, smallish lots residential. So what they're proposing, current and proposed, um, under parcel L, the current uses um, are listed on the left. So kind of small neighborhood uses. On the right are the three uses that they're proposing to add to the list. Um, on the right, you can see the, the right side is the zones where those uses would be permitted. Um, Unfortunately, they don't all quite line up. This is all for the intent of having a uh, Van Buren Township trustee's office, community center, and also a community garden. So in 2004, there was an amended use of religious, there we go. Uh, Sorry, amended use of religious facility that was added um, by a design group um, for a church. So that was added. In this scenario, um, it would be the three uses. Um, 
Again, they called them neighborhood serving retail services. Neighborhood serving retail services. Um, so in this area there on the left is the proposed site plan that the petitioner filled out um, with the community garden area, some drainage, and the two, two community building areas. On the right is a kind of skewed pictometry photo. Um, as I said, the property's vacant, undeveloped, so it's just mostly shrubland right now. Um, the two access points are off of South Fieldstone Drive. They do maintain fringe along West State Road 48. Uh, there are utilities, septic, or I'm sorry, sewer and water is available. There are no known car features. Um, it is located within a critical watershed, which is called Cape Creek. Um, the MS4 coordinator has noted that they will review this when a uh, development plan is submitted, that so far that the petitioner has been working with them and that they have no, paraphrasing, there are no major concerns. So they will review the development plan when it's filed. Um, some of the other things that they're doing is that the design standards are unclear, um, including like landscape, parking, and setbacks. So the first one that we're going to review is landscaping. Um, so what we would like to see is they've, they've proposed standards for um, three of the four sides of landscaping, but not for West State Road 48. So that's what's highlighted on the screen. Um, for the zoning, current zoning ordinance under Chapter 8, 830, we would want to require streetscape. Um, they have not specified whether or not they would meet that or change the ordinance. For parking, uh, we brought this up in previous meetings. Um, they have not specified whether they would meet any of these requirements. They have not specified their own requirement. So we would like to see that in the planning. And then for setbacks, um, so their setbacks are consistent with ours. Um, so there really are no issues. They have proposed a consistent minimum of open space and maximum height proposed for buildings. Um, so staff does re uh, recommend a positive recommendation based on the findings of fact. Um, since they do have a, um, a request to waive the final hearing, um, we would like to, staff would recommend a, that they don't waive that, that it, there is a final hearing so that they, that the petitioner can provide the parking standards and the landscaping required for the streetscape just so that it does not continue on to be vague. Um, I'd like to see that specified. Okay, thank you, Anne. That was very nice. And I know, is the petitioner, oh, actually we uh, should go to the members of the plan commission to see if there are questions for Anne. I'm not seeing anyone, Margaret. Okay, and if the petitioner is here or the petitioner's representative, we'd like to hear from you. Is Rita here or? Yeah, it's still, uh, here, I'm, I'm Chris Cockrum is here. And then Rita, I believe is on the call. And also we do have Katie Stein with Smith Design Group that can answer questions. But I'll, I'll start in, one of the things that we asked in the very beginning and, and before we, I asked the township to, you know, spend development dollars and design was to know would these three uses even be permitted? Um, because as you guys know, going through the design process is extremely expensive. Uh, I also sit on the Bloomington Plan Commission and I see these reports and I know we need to have this information to make an informed decision, but it can be tens of thousands of dollars. And here we've got an affordable housing issue and development um, and we're asking for all of this dollar. So before I ask the township to spend you know, dollars to go through this process, which we have hired Smith Design Group. I guess the thought is, is are these uses even, would you even consider that? Um, and so, so really, I just kind of want to go through the process a little bit. So I'm Chris Cockrum. I'm a, I'm a commercial real estate broker here, and I've been working with the Bloomington Township uh, and Rita Barrow searching for a new location. But part of this search was to find a location uh, to better serve the citizens of Van Buren Township. Uh, Rita has a great board. 
And with Rita, uh, they had asked if we could find a site to add these additional amenities to the township. And these amenities were the community building, a community garden. Uh, and, and finding a site uh, to incorporate their offices, a community building and a community garden is not an easy task. And obviously we've got to stay within the Van Buren Township. However, when we came across the Fieldstone lot, we felt it was perfect to incorporate all of these services and amenities uh, of the township uh, trustee's office. And we also noticed that this lot has sat undeveloped for over 25 years. And since the market has not supported the, the current permitted uses, we felt adding these three uses would add value to help develop the lot, but also add value to the Fieldstone neighborhood and Van Buren Township. So first I just would ask that you approve adding these three uses uh, and then we would go through the design process as well. Rita's on here as well. Rita, I don't know if you wanted to comment and then also Katie's on here that can answer questions if needed. Um, yes, yeah. can you hear me okay? We can hear you. It's a little crunchy, but we, we know you're there, Rita. <laughs> okay. um, I just, I don't want to spend tax dollars for something that may not go anywhere. So I am in 100% agreement with Chris that this is something we feel that not just the Indian Township, the, the trustee's office, but the residents could find positive things here. Um, this development is beautiful as far as being able to develop it. It has all the things that I was looking for, such as bus routes, sidewalks, uh, areas big enough to where we could make these buildings beautiful. Uh, I talked with a couple of the residents in Fieldstone, and I think they have some concerns, and we don't have those concerns until we do the design. Once we do the design, then we can share it with the residents, but I don't want to spend unnecessary money until I know for sure that we can change the Thank you, Rita. I think that makes you a good uh, public servant and a good steward of the tax dollars that you oversee. So I just want to thank you for your uh, conservative approach. And, um, uh, you know, I think that at this time, we'd like to hear from Katie, and uh, then we'll move on to uh, the members of the public. Thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, Katie Stein, Smith Design Group. We've been working with uh, Chris and Rita a little bit on this project. Like Chris mentioned, we haven't gone in full design mode on this. We are just obviously trying to get um, towards the approval of the uses that are proposed here. Um, I guess I do really have a couple of questions on this as far as the parking standards and, and landscape standards. Um, we prepared a schematic site plan and parking spaces based on what is in the current Monroe County code and um, basically have not provided other parking standards, assuming that the PUD, if it's not specifically spelled out, it would default back to the county code. Same with the landscaping requirements. So I guess I'm a little confused as to why we are being requested for those specific statements. Can it just be left at what the code states currently? Um, and I, I will say right now we have 62 spaces shown. Again, our concept site plan, it's just not final by any means. Um, and just based on the community center requirement and the government center requirement, those two alone only required 30 spaces. So we've got a lot of overflow um, for this use. But again, this is not this is not the final um, plan by any means. And that's all I have to say. Oh, thank you, Katie. And uh, Jackie, do you have an answer? And do you have an answer for Katie's question? Yeah, so um, if they want 
just uh, state that it does default back to the zoning ordinance, that would be sufficient um, for landscaping and parking. Um, parking might get a little bit more complicated. There, um, it might be preferred that there's a specific um, kind of standard noted because there are three different standards, not all of which that are necessarily compatible. Um, so if it could be stated that that is what the petitioner is agreeing to, I think that this you know, proposal could possibly move on. Um, I know the landscape and the streetscape, it was just silent. Um, so you could specify that it, you know, agrees, you know, it's agreeable with uh, the zoning ordinance. Parking standards, I think you would need to state something. Um, otherwise, we could take a little bit more time and have it uh, stated in writing. So given that, Katie and Rita, is there anything that you would like to state for Anne in order to help facilitate this process? I guess ultimately it would, you know, if Rita's okay with that, we can meet the, the zoning requirements, um, but I don't know if there's something specific that we need to state, I guess this is a planning question, for that community garden um, parking ratio, um, the landscape standard, if, if Rita's okay with that, then I would say we would just default to Monroe County zoning ordinance standards for that. Um, as far as the landscaping, yes, I'm, I'm completely okay with the requirements there. The parking standards, um, 62 seems to be a lot of parking. I don't think that the community building will be big enough for 62 along with the garden, along with the township. The township office already uh, has three employees, sometimes a fourth when part time. But um, for us to put that many parking spaces there, the and that was one of the concerns of the, the addition, the Fieldstone uh, phase one, because they didn't want individuals parking to where they could see the back of their homes. I, I told them, uh, when I spoke with them yesterday and today, that we make sure there was a barrier, whether it be landscaping or no parking, Know, to the back of their house. Um, mm -hmm. I totally understand that. I just don't see that we are going to need the 62 or whatever it was uh, parking. Maybe, yes, maybe yes, but you gotta remember the offices and the community building probably won't be both operated at the same time along with community garden that's only going to be there during the uh, season for parking. So I'm a little reluctant to say that there's going to be needing a lot of parking for that. Well, thank you, Rita. Um, Mr. Wilson, who's the planning director, has his hand raised. And so, uh, Larry, if you would, um, thank you. What? Yeah, it sounds like they're willing to do the landscape standards, which we could easily add in as a default. Uh, the problem is we have to have parking standards of some time, either those pros proposed by the petitioner or to default to the county standards. I don't think planning has any op opposition to coming up with their own standards that might reflect more accurately the kind of the mixed use they have of these properties and the actual uh, demand for parking but we need to have those numbers in the outline plan in order to have a standard to be utilized when we review the development plan. Um, Mr. Wilson, um, it, do you think that it's possible to, um, to state that tonight or do you think that that requires another review? Uh, I don't know that we, uh, again, Ann, do we have any numbers at all on the parking that they're proposing? Uh, no, no, um, it's been, I mean, we've asked uh, informal, I mean, informally in a way, uh, 
during planning commission administrative meetings to that we want these numbers. Um, I have not reached out specifically and stated, hey, you have to provide these numbers, um, but we have mentioned that they should be required. Um, and no, we don't have any draft of any kind, so no. Uh, one, one thought on this is that we are going to need an ordinance anyway uh, in regard to have something to pass on to the commissioners. And uh, we could, one, continue this to the administrative meeting uh, on the 1st of April, uh, first week of April, and, and advertise that in advance as a public hearing. As long as you continue it at this meeting to that hearing, we could address it at that time that's an option that wouldn't delay their project unnecessarily. Oh, Dave, thank do you, you agree? <laughs> and do you agree? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. And um, I believe also that Mr. Garitas had uh, his hand up. No, I was just gonna suggest that maybe we could work it out through an admin meeting to keep them on track. So Larry tuned in on it. Yeah, I would be in favor of that. I, I myself, and I also, uh, as you know, I'm in support of this project and another government unit, uh, serving another government unit to try to save money for the taxpayers is a lofty, lofty and noble goal. And I just would like to say that I can see a lot of synergies here between this community guard, garden and also the multi-use that is going in there at Westgate. I can see maybe them growing vegetables for a restaurant that might uh, appear or Ivy Tech uh, facilitating the growth of microgreens or something that could be used. I just see a lot of synergies here. So I would like to facilitate this and to ensure that uh, we can help them get it through with this uh, low cost as possible on behalf of the taxpayers. But that being said, I think it's time to go to the public. And if we could, uh, if the public, anyone who is in favor of this development, if they could raise their hand, uh, they each member of the public has about uh, three minutes to speak. So uh, thank you. I'm not seeing anyone, Margaret. Okay, is there anyone here who would like to speak in opposition to this? I see one person, Mr. Wolfgang. Uh, yes, um, <clears throat> I, I live in Fieldstone subdivision and I, I am op opposing this development on, on uh, some, I think, legitimate grounds. Uh, in Indiana, the trustees are elected people in each township who help the poor obtain basic necessities. That's what a trustee does. This trustee may help with shelter, home housing costs, utility bills, food, clothing, medical needs, burial expenses, etc. It's to help the poor. I do not see we're paying that lot was sell for sale for $250,000 a couple of years ago. Maybe it climbed down a little bit, but Sam Schmidt didn't go down much. So even if she got 225 or 220,000, that is very expensive for 4.9 acres. Uh, that money, in my opinion, could be much better used to help the poor, the people that a township trustee by law is supposed to be helping. Uh, originally, when I talked to Rita <clears throat> a year and a half or so ago, she shared with me that yes, the uh, fire department had to be expanded and she was planning to move the trustee's office across Kirby Road by buying one of those residential houses and converting it into uh, the trustee's office. Uh, next thing I hear is, whoa, we're going to spend $200,000 plus dollars for property and then we're going to have to build on it. And I'm thinking, okay, uh, that's a lot of property, that's a lot of money, that could be better spent in other ways. Um, there's, you know, there was the other thing that needs to be said is there was no public notice of tonight's meeting. The only way I found out about it is I called this morning and Barb told me, uh, Barb Carter, I think, that this meeting was on. <clears throat> there were no, no, no signs like for the February meeting in our subdivision. My understanding is no letters were sent to the people who border this area and I don't border it, but 
the newspaper is not it may be legal, but it's not a good way to tell people we're having a meeting that we want your input on. So I I, I question this whole thing uh, on a number of, of, of issues and primarily that uh, the residents weren't informed. So you are not getting a true uh, a true feeling for what is going on. And uh, I uh, I just go back to what is the trustee supposed to do? Do I want to spend four hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand plus on the lot, and then more for building? And who's going to maintain it? I'm a taxpayer here. We're all taxpayers in the county. Do I want my tax money used in that way? I don't. I think a building across from the fire station would be just fine. There's hardly ever anybody there that comes to Rita Smith. I mean, she has four or five apartment space. That's all she ever needs. You know, and a community center might be an overflow, but we want to do that kind of luxurious thing when you can rent a place at the uh, at the 4-H fairgrounds at the fairgrounds for very little money if you want to have a party or have a get together. So that's my comment. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Von Buechler. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Wilson, you have your hand raised. Off. I, I, I just wanted to make sure I, I believe we did have we advertised for the first hearing on this. Is that correct, Ann? Yes. And, yeah, and people we, got notice. We did advertise. So the February meeting was canceled due to the storm event, but it was also noticed in the paper for this month's meeting. And I see that the letters certificate of mailing was sent out here, but uh, because the meeting was automatically canceled, all the agenda items were brought up to tonight's agenda. And I understand that that causes confusion. Thank you. Is there anyone, uh, other member of the public who would like to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I'd like to bring it back to the members of the plan commission for further discussion and a motion. Jeff, you have your hand raised? Yes, um, I, I definitely appreciate the comments from the, the member of the public who spoke here this evening. Um, he certainly has a right as a township resident to express his uh, views on the priorities of township government. Um, I did just wanna make it clear that um, town, one, of, ex, one of the express duties of a township trustee in the Indiana Code 3664 dash three is to provide and maintain township parks and community centers. So I just want to make it clear that this isn't an expansion of, you know, a, an expansion of duties. This is one of the core duties of a, of a township trustee, obviously taking care of the poor is, I think most people would agree, if not everybody is the most important, but this is a legitimate and statutory duty of, uh, of a township trustee. And I certainly, uh, and just as a matter of process, I have no problem at all with the idea of, um, of of continuing this to the uh, work session meeting and advertising that as a public hearing, which would also, I think, address um, uh, the member of the public's concern about advertising and give other members of the public the opportunity to comment. Thank you, Mr. McKim. Commissioner Thomas. Um, yes. So uh, just to echo that, our goal here for, and I appreciate the comment uh, by the resident. Our goal here is to consider whether or not this is an appropriate use for this space, not whether this is an appropriate use of township funds. That's a separate entity. Um, I would encourage him to um, talk to uh, members of the township board or to have a meeting with Ms. Barrow to um, uh, air his concerns um, and um, deal with it that way because that's not our our concern is not to make decisions as a watchdog for other units of government. Um, but I do, I really like this project and it sounds like we have a couple of, of small things that are left uh, to be worked out and I don't wanna delay things uh, for Van Buren Township. Uh, they've put some time and effort in here. Um, so um, I, uh, I would, make a, I see somebody else's hand is raised, but I would make a motion that we continue this until the April 6th uh, administrative meeting of uh, the plan commission. Do I have that date right? Yes. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Just to not uh, be uh, 
you know, to be condu conducive to our environment. Uh, Dawn, your hand is raised. And uh, if you're a member of the public, uh, we'd like to hear from you, but for no more than three minutes. Thank you. Okay, Mr. You're, on, you're on mute, Don. I'm not sure if, there okay. you go, we okay. hear you. Okay, so um, I had been in contact with uh, Rita Barrow and I was one of the residents that actually attended the November meeting that they had with um, this gentleman. And our concerns um, were not reflected in the meeting minutes, which was attached to this meeting. Um, we had several concerns about the security, about um, the hours, um, the fact that there was no fencing that was proposed, no tree line, nothing like that. And then on, on the very top of it, the plan that was used to supplement this meeting, well, the February meeting that was um, canceled, a Zoom meeting was canceled during a snowstorm, um, that... Um, it was just a plan that was originally planned for Highland Community Church or Highland Park Church. And so the plan that was supplemented with that, in addition to meeting minute notes that were not reflecting some of the concerns the residents on the street had. Um, and that is something that has stuck with me as a representative for this neighborhood. And I have been asked to cite those um, concerns both at this meeting or what was supposed to be the February meeting and at this meeting and every meeting that is subsequent from this. I have talked to Rita a little bit. I've got a sense that she wants to address these, but the um, concern is the documents that supplement your February 16th meeting are not accurate. And that is something that I would feel as a planning commission that should be cleared up to have all the documentation before a decision is rendered. Thank you. Thank you, Don. And I see Mr. Stainbrook's hand, and then I also saw Mr. Pittsburgh's hand. So Jim, if you would like to proceed. Margaret, I've lowered my hand. Oh, thank you, Jerry. Uh, Jim, you're, you're on mute. mute. I'm just awfully sorry here. Uh, Pardon me. Um, if if we have Margaret a motion pending, I would uh, second uh, Julie's uh, motion. If that's still okay, uh, Jackie and Larry, I think we do have a motion and a second to continue this to the uh, administrative meeting on a April sixth. Um, Larry, you want to call the roll? Yeah, I just want to verify that there was a motion because I don't recall actually hearing that. Uh, um, Ms. Commissioner Thomas made the motion. That okay, okay. We had a public comment and then Steve. Yeah, okay, that, uh, again, I am literally operating in the dark here tonight. It's okay. <laughs> so I will call the roll on the motion to continue number 2012-PO-05 uh, uh, to the April 6th uh, administrative meeting. Uh, there will be a public hearing that will continue be continued the public hearing will be continued to that date and a public hearing be held at the administrative meeting for field still planning outline plan amendment for part uh, three for parcel l uh, again a vote in favor is vote to continue to the april 6th administrative meeting uh tron and Rand tron and right randolph yes Rudy garitas Jeff McCann? Yes. Uh, D. Owens? Yes. Jerry Pittsford? Yes. Jim Steinbrook? Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes, with a note that we need that additional information that Ms. Dawn spoke about added to the packet, please. Thank you. Okay. Amy Thompson? Yes. Barb Clemens? Yes. Uh, I'll go back to Bernie Garitas. Yeah, I'm sorry. I couldn't quite manage my microphone. Yes. Okay, uh, the vote is uh, nine to zero in favor of continuing to the April 6th administrative meeting uh, in order to give time for the petitioner to supply uh, 
numbers in regard to parking and clarify the landscaping standards. And we'll have those additional requirements uh, available at that time. So Braun and Wolfgang, if you're interested to attend that meeting and to um, discuss that or to bring other issues to our attention, that will be April 6th at 5.30. And uh, just, just so that you are aware and thank you for bringing your concerns to our attention. Moving on, uh, we are on item 2012-PUO-06, the trails, which was formerly known as White Oak, planned unit outline. This is a preliminary hearing and they've requested a waiver of the second hearing. So uh, Rebecca, if you would be so kind as to present this. I'm gonna cover for Rebecca tonight, Margaret. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so yes, this is the trails. This is another planned unit development outline plan for this evening. Um, and so as we show, had shown in the beginning is we have the trails and then we have blind squirrels and then we also have Southern Meadows. So if you want to speak at the end of this, we will give time for that, but just note that there are kind of three items on the agenda and we want you to make sure that you have the comments reflected under the correct petition if, if you would like to. So um, this property is 4691 South Victor Pike. It's 44.07 acres. It's zoned residential RE1 um, and it's, at the, it's um, near two trails here. So we have Clear Creek Trail and then Bloomington Rail Trail as well. So just a quick summary of their request here is an outline plan. So it's changing the zoning from RE1 to PUD in order to accommodate development that's not otherwise accommodated in our Monroe County Zoning Ordinance. And so what they're proposing is a mix of housing types. So they have single family homes, paired patio homes or attached single family. And then they're also requesting flexibility for fourplex or row townhomes. The proposal does include two ingress egress points for vehicular traffic off of South Victor Pike, as well as uh, bike or pedestrian trail access to Clear Creek Trail and the Bloomington Rail Trail. They're proposing three phases over a period of seven years, which would start um, if approved, um, timeline for starting would be as sooner rather than later, they're showing summer 2021, there would be permitting and processing requirements, but that's roughly their, their seven year timeline is to start when they can through 2028. So um, according to the petitioner, their request is um, designed in order to allow for attainable middle-class housing in the Monroe County area. So as I stated, this is at uh, 4691 Victor Pike and you have the um, intersection of two trails. And while I'm here, I would just mention, this is the area for the Southern Meadows petition and blind squirrels that we heard earlier. So uh, this area is zoned residential one, um, RE1, it requires a one acre minimum lot size currently. Around this area is also zoned RE1, but you also have some PUDs in the area that accommodate either housing. Um, we also have the gym that was mentioned earlier and some other commercial um, areas here. And then MR and RS 3.5 allow for about 0.21 acre minimum lot sizes and then agar is two and a half. So just to kind of give you an, an idea, there is um, some higher density above, but um, there's also some lower density below. So in the comprehensive plan, this area is zoned for mixed residential and open space. And then we also have a site conditions map here, and there is floodplain and some karst areas that um, do touch the property. And there's also a utility, 100 foot utility easement that uh, cuts the property in half that runs north south. Um, existing on the property is one single home, um, and it's primarily used as kind of pasture or. or agricultural land at this point, um, no other development at this time. So uh, the proposed phasing plan that they've put together includes three phases and um, what they're hoping to 
uh, achieve in this phasing plan. It does kind of cross through some of the zones of development because some of these zones have single family, some of them paired patio home, and then some of them have townhome or paired patio home options. What they're hoping to accomplish is to have about 145 units is what's proposed right now. And these would be the counts by the phases. And so, you know, in the immediate term, 2021 through 2025, 44 units, 2024 through 2027, 57 units, and then phase three to completion would be uh, 44 units by 2028. So um, this is how they're breaking out kind of the zoning within the uh, PUD. So um, as you know, PUDs are, can, can have a little bit of nuance to them and this one is no exception. So area A, they're showing about 0.14 acre minimum lot sizes here. Um, and that one um, is calling for a zero setback lot line for paired patio home. Area B is a 0.22 acre minimum lot size. And um, that one is saying that it's um, community access to trails and green space. Um, and I believe this area is for primarily detached single family units. Um, area C here has two options. Um, in one option or both options, there's 0.16 acre minimum lot size, um, but in the one option, um, they want it, they're wanting to have an option for um, shared walls and townhomes, and the other option could be something like a paired patio home um, allowance in this area. And then area D um, is 0.16 acres here, and um, I believe that's also the paired patio home uh, development as well. So um, staff recommendation for this PUD is denial. Um, in the main findings and um, discussions with the petitioner is that there's a lot of built-in flexibility here for this PUD, um, but basically when you take out some of that flexibility for the townhomes, which may or may not occur under this PUD, uh, this development could actually take place under a by right zoning district, such as medium density residential or high density residential and achieve a very similar outcome. Um, and it's, we, we do allow for applications for plan unit developments, but plan unit developments are kind of a snapshot in time and they do not update as our code updates. Um, and so they, they are there, once they're zoned, they're there. And so we like to try to encourage where possible to follow the existing Monroe County zoning ordinance. And then also this PUD is just allowing for higher density residential and it's not including any other commercial uses um, or neighborhood commercial uses as suggested in the comprehensive plan. So I will take any questions um, that the plan commission has at this point. <laughs> 